welcome to West Kirby's Country Club. Under normal circumstances, we invite you in to have a tour and see exactly how the school works on a day-to-day -day basis. Unfortunately, what we've been having to do is make do with these virtual tours. Okay, so this is reception, where pupils arrive. Okay, this is the main way in. So pupils come in in the morning, they're either met by staff or if they're able to, they can make their own way down to class. This is the main corridor and down here we have the entrance to our adventure playground. out here. Pupils can come out here at break time, lunch time or if they need to have a movement break during the lessons. The staff will come out here and make sure that they can access the equipment safely. Around the back we also have some outdoor gym equipment and we can see the multi-use games area at the back as well. Moving back into the main school, back on the main corridor and along here we have one of our three sensory rooms. Okay, I'm just going to put the main light on now exactly what it's like. Okay, so this is a room that our pupils can access if they're feeling a bit anxious, a bit stressed, they need somewhere quiet to come and spend a little bit of time. It's also a nice room to come to if they want to talk to staff about something. For some pupils it works really well, for other pupils they prefer to go and outside onto the adventure playground and have a bit of movement but it's entirely up to the pupils as to which way which one they choose okay so here we have the library Lots of books to choose from. We follow a reading programme called Accelerated Reader. So all the books are colour coded and pupils will know which books are within their reading range. So this means that they still have free choice when they come to the library. They know which range of books they can choose from. So they're guessing, still getting that library experience. But we know that the books they're reading are books that they can access. There are lots of incentives in school to support pupils with developing their reading and the librarian will look at whatever books pupils are interested in. If we haven't got them in school she'll do her best to make sure that we can get them into school. It's also a really nice quiet place to come to if somebody wants a little bit of quiet time. There's always a member of staff here. There's lots of little quiet areas where pupils can sit and read a book if that's going to help them with reducing their anxiety or having a bit of time to self-regulate. Okay, back on the main corridor now. And down here, we have 
food technology, art and DT. Okay, so this is the food technology room, so there's plenty of space here for pupils to complete some written work and then a nice big practical space for pupils to do the practical work. The most we tend to have in a class is eight pupils with at least one teaching assistant and of course the teacher as well. So it's quite a big space for the number of people who will be in here. So again, a nice big room, lots of space for pupils if they need to work individually, but also the opportunity to work as a group as well, because supporting students and working together is really, really important. Okay, you can see here some examples of pupils' work. So this work is some um, of the AS level work that some of the students were doing last year. This is some of the photography work that pupils have been doing. So as well as art and photography, there is a kiln so pupils can do ceramics. There's also lots of other techniques that pupils can experiment with. Um, we do textiles, we use lots and lots of different types of resources for pupils to experiment with. And again, a lot of the work is done using people's areas of interest. Okay, you'll see as we go around the school lots of visual things here. Okay, so everything is, is represented visually as well, so that all people's know exactly what's expected and what's going on. Okay, down here we have DT. Okay, so the design technology rooms, a room that's very popular with our students. So as well as all the traditional woodwork and joinery that goes on, we have two 3D printers in here, one in there and one here. So pupils can design um, objects on the computer and then it can actually be printed out in real life. So it uses these plastic reels to, to build up the different ways to print it out. And then down here, we have the more traditional DT equipment. And again, as with art, teaching staff can use people's specific interests to really get pupils to engage in the work that they're doing. In here is the computer suite. So as you can see, well resourced, lots of lovely Apple Macs in here for pupils to use. And again, we've got another 3D printer. I think this one's just printed out, looks like flower. Okay, so there's lots of qualifications that pupils can work towards in computers. It can be the information and communication technology qualifications, or if pupils have got a real interest in computing and computer science, we can look at those qualifications as well. Okay, 
Okay, through here, we've got the DOT suite. So we're really lucky to have this facility here and to have two occupational therapists as part of our staff team. So this is an area where all new students will, will come in here and have assessments by the occupational therapists. If it's written in their education healthcare plan that they need sessions with the OT, this is where they will come. Or if it's recognised after assessment by our own OT or there's indications that actually spending some time in here and looking at some of the exercises that will support pupils in here, if it's felt that that's something that's important and needed for the pupils that will be put in place. And you can see on the wall here we've got the zones of regulation. So this is a programme that's carried out throughout the school and it supports pupils in recognising which zone they're in. So depending on how they're feeling, they identify which zone they're in. And it's also about giving them the tools to manage those emotions and try and regulate so that they are able to move between the zones. So the green zone is ideally where we want people to be. So that's when you're feeling okay. You're ready to learn, you're focused, you're relaxed, you're quite happy with everything that's going on. The blue zone is when people might feel a bit tired, a bit quiet, a bit shy, maybe they're not feeling particularly well. The yellow zone is when people start to feel maybe a little bit embarrassed, a little bit starting to get a little bit excited, starting to get a little bit worried, you may start feeling a little bit silly. And then the red zone is when pupils may have lost control. They might be really angry. They might be over the top excited. So by recognising which zone they're in and identifying what sorts of activities or strategies can be used to bring them back to the green zone, this is a really effective way of supporting students in self-regulation. here we can see the adventure playground again and then down here we have got science so this is the science lab fully equipped science lab so we can do experiments with Bunsen burners we've got electricity there we've got the water as well over here we've got a fume cupboard to do any experiments that are particularly smelly or maybe just need that little bit of extra layer of protection. Okay, all of the controls, so the gas, the electricity and the water, you know, are controlled by, uh, by the staff. So it's a really safe environment for students to do their practical activities. Upstairs, we've got English. Okay, so this is one of our English rooms. Again, plenty of space for people to spread themselves out. Presented visually, so this is a timetable for this class, so they know exactly what it is that they're doing throughout the day. Okay, we've got to focus on the social communication targets. We've got the school rules up there, emotions thermometers, and on here some samples of good work been going on and then up here 
record of their going for gold. So going for gold is the reward system that we have in place. So if people get a green, so in every lesson they have the option of earning something towards their going for gold. So if they get a green, they're earning five pence. If they get a silver, they get 10 pence and a gold, they get 25 pence. So in a day, they have the option of, they can earn up to 10 of the going for gold. So they could earn 50p a day. And that all adds up. I mean, you can see on here some of the totals that some of these students are up to already. That's because some of them have decided to save it. And the way that they can gain what it is that they've earned, it could be either in vouchers, or if there's something in particular that they really want, with the permission of parents, you know, that can be bought for them. So it does work as a really good incentive for students. And then up the stairs at the top, we've got maths. So again, nice big classroom, desks all spaced out, and things represented visually. And we've got the zones of regulation up there on the wall to remind students. Okay, and up here, we've got the menu for school dinners as well. So those are all the main classrooms in the school. What I will do now is I'll show you the outside area of the school the sports where the sports hall is. Okay, so we're going back through the main part of the school. And it may look quite a, a big space to navigate but when pupils are moving from class to class they have the support of their class TA walking with them so they will be walked from one room to another and over time they will get used to working out where everything is. <laughs> 